I think the general thing here is that thinking about interfaces with the differentiation that you want to have as a business is going to be really key because I think the world that I don't think we want to live in is one where effectively these companies become sort of outsourced customer discovery engines and then new Amazon Basics versions of these things come out over time. That would not be a particularly good world to live in. Audience who are in the early stages of building these companies. And one fundamental question is, okay, do you go build on top of an open AI API? Do you go build on something in the open source? Do you go build your own large model? Like, how do you, how do you think a founder should navigate making that decision? I think this is probably the biggest question for people to ask right now. I think the, the, the root thing that I think is worth answering first is like, what is the loop you're gonna run for your company to compound? Like, um, is it, is it, is it going to be oriented towards like really deeply understanding a particular customer use case? Is it going to be oriented towards some sort of data flywheel that you're trying to build? I think the general thing here is that like, like thinking about how that interfaces with the differentiation that you want to have as a business is going to be really key because I think the world uh, that you, that I don't think we want to live in is one where uh, effectively uh, these companies become sort of like outsourced customer discovery engines and then new Amazon basics versions of these things come out over time, right? Like, like that would not be a particularly good world to live in. So I think figuring out what that compounding looks like is the most important first step. I think the other thing to think about here is just like how many nines do you need? Um, if you need a lot of nines of reliability, I think one thing that's really, really difficult is you just, like, you lack all the affordances that you could possibly want if you are sort of um, uh, consuming this through an intermediary to get you to where you want need to be with your customers. Um, so I think that, like, because of those different reasons, like, you could end up choosing a very different point in, in space for how you want to ultimately consume these services. Yeah. Maybe just to add one thing is that one of the nice thing about having these APIs is it's extremely easy to kind of get started and try something. You can sit down in the afternoon, you punch in some data, and you can kind of get a sense of the possibilities. In some cases, it's sort of a, a lower bound on how well you can do because you spend an afternoon, and if you invest in more, and if you fine tune and build sort of custom things, and uh, can only get better in some sense. So that I think has you know opened up you know a, a lot of it like a kind of. Um, the, the challenge is to even formulate what is the right problem to go on. And typically, you, you don't know, because, and you have to collect data, and then you have to train a model. And then that loop becomes very uh, expensive. But if you could just sit down in the afternoon, try a few things, and maybe you, like few shot your way to something that's actually reasonable, now that kind of gets you kind of into a different part of the space, and you can iterate much faster. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense in terms of prototyping quickly and trying to like take out product market fit risk. One question becomes, and personally, I'm curious for your take on this, if you start that way, how do you over time build durability into your product? Because I could make the argument, hey, maybe you're just a thin layer on top of someone else's API. You can quickly de-risk product market fit, but is there real durability in your layer of the stack? Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, yeah, the transition out of API is a very discreet, discreet one in some sense. I mean, I, I think it's a kind of a, you know, people also do like human uh, wizard of Oz experiments. You put a human there, and you have the human do it, and then you see kind of work out all the interface issues and and, and whether this makes sense at all, and then you try to kind of put something else, uh, take the human out, um, and you know now you could put an API there, and you could see get a sense of what things are like, and then in some cases. Like maybe uh, you know, future learning is actually for some things actually not that strong. If you have, for example, data, and maybe like a fine-tuned like T5 model or something much smaller can actually be effective. And you know, I don't think I think the last thing in your mind should be like let's go pre-train a 500 billion parameter <laughs> model when you don't know what application you're building.